cannot take responsibility for items damaged in transit. The captain of your vessel was given warning at time of loading that it was not suitable for the carriage of robots, and so damage to its cargo cannot be charged to our account. Yours faithfully, Rossum's Universal Robots, ETC, and transcription of process, Scylla. New letter, ready? Yes. To the E.B. Hudson Agency, New York date. We correspond to acknowledge our receipt of your order for 5,000 robots. As you are sending your own bus vessel, please dispatch as cargo equal quantities of soft and full hard coal for RUR, saying to be credited as partial payment of the amount due to us. Yours faithfully, Rossum's Universal Robots, ETC, and transcription and process, Stella. New letter re ready? Yes. Bride and Sirk, Hamburg, date. We are pleased to confirm receipt of your order for 15,000 robots. Hello, Central Office. Yes. Certainly. Oh, well, yes, as always. Well, of course, you should message them. Hmm. Fine. Subtle, where were we? Your order for 15,000 robots. Ah, uh, yes, 15,000 robots. 15,000 robots. <laughs> Mr. there's a lady outside who is asking. Oh, whoa, 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 what? A, a lady? Well, who is it? I do not know. Oh, Mr. Glory, president of... Oh, 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 show him in. <laughs> oh, um, hello, Miss Glory, uh, do come in, do come in. You are Mr. Don, the managing director. <laughs> At your service. I've come to see you. With the business card of Mr. Glory, and no more needs to be said. Mr. Glory is my father. I am Helena Glory. Miss Glory, this is an exceptional honor for us that but you will come you can't just show me the door. Huh, not at all. It is an honor to welcome the daughter of an illustrious businessman like your father. Oh, please, well, take a seat. Um, Sulla, you may go. Ah, now, how can I help you, Miss Glory? I've come here to see... To you. see our paper people make the factory for yourself. All of our visitors want to see the factory, and of course, you're very welcome. I thought the general public wasn't allowed to. To enter the factory? Well, of course they're not. <laughs> but not everyone who comes here has a recommendation from someone as important as your father, Miss Glory. Don't you let everyone see it? <laughs> not all of it. Making artificial people is an industrial secret. Won't you ever let me finish what I'm trying to say? Oh, I'm sorry, is that not what you were going to say? I was going to ask whether you... Whether I might show you something in the factory that the others aren't allowed to see. <laughs> well, I'm sure that'll be okay, Miss Glory. What makes you think that's what I was going to ask you? <laughs> because everyone asks for the same thing. But I can personally show you more than the others are allowed to see. Thank you. <laughs> all I ask is that you don't say anything at all to anyone else. <laughs> My word of honor. Uh, thank you. Oh, would you like to take off your sunglasses? No, oh, of course, you'll be wanting to see my face. Do excuse me. Uh, that's all right. And if you would just let go of my hand. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, I forgot. Do you want to make sure that I'm not a spy? <laughs> you seem very careful. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, well, uh, that's just how we are. Don't you trust me? Exceptionally, Mr. I do excuse me, Miss Glory. This really is an exceptional pleasure. Um, did you have a good crossing? Oh, yes. Why? Because, <laughs> well, what I, what I meant is, you are very young. Are we going into the factory now? Uh, yes, yes. I suppose about, hmm. 22, I would think. 22 what? <laughs> Years. No, 21. Wait, what do you want to know that for? <laughs> well, because, hmm, sort of. Well, you will be staying here for some time, won't you? Well, that depends on how much you choose to show me. <laughs> Again with the damn factory. Miss Glory, you can see everything, of course. Would you be interested in hearing the history of our invention? Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> well, this is what happened. 
It was 1920 when old Rossum, still a young man then, but a great scientist, came to live on this isolated island in order to study marine biology. Well, full stop. Now, alongside his studies, he made several attempts to synthesize the chemical structure of living tissues, which he called protomatter, and he eventually discovered a material that behaved just the same as living tissue, despite being chemically quite different. This was 1932, exactly 440 years after the discovery of America. Do you know all of this by heart? I do. Physiology really isn't my subject. Well, shall I carry on? If you like. <clears throat> Miss Glory, this is what he wrote down in his chemical notes. Nature has found only one way of organizing living matter. There is, however, another which is simpler, well, easier to mold, and quicker to produce than nature ever stumbled across. This other path along which life may have developed is what I have just discovered. <laughs> just think. He wrote these words about a blob of some kind of collodial jelly that not even a dog would eat. Well, imagine him sitting with a test tube, thinking of how the hulk could grow into an entire tree of life made of all the animals, starting with a tiny moat of existence and ending with a human. A human made of different material than we are. Miss Glory, this was one of the greatest moments in history. Well, what happened next? Well, next, next he had to get life out of this test tube and speed up its development so that it would create some of the organs needed, such as bone and nerves and all, all sorts of things, and find materials such as catalysts and enzymes and hormones and so on and so Are you understanding all this? Well, I I'm not sure. Perhaps not all of it. Well, I don't understand any of it. It's just that using the slime, he could have made whatever he wanted. He could have made a Medusa with the brain of Socrates or a worm 50 meters long. Uh, but old Rossum didn't have a trace of humor about him, so he got into his head to make a normal vertebrae such as a human being, and that's what he started doing. What exactly was it that he was trying to do? Well, imitate nature. First he tried to make an artificial dog. It took him years and years, and the result was something like a, a malformed deer which died after a few days, so it was just dreadful. I, I can show it to you in the museum. Then he set to work making an actual human being. And that is what I'm not allowed to tell anyone. No one whatsoever. Pity it's in all the papers, then. <laughs> that is a pity. But do you know what's not in all the papers? Old Rossum? Completely mad. Now, seriously, keep that to yourself. He wanted to recreate a human being. Well, that's what you do, isn't it? Well, roughly speaking, yes, but old Ross a minute literally. He wanted in some scientific way to take the place of God. Well, he was a convinced materialist and he wanted to do everything simply to prove that God wasn't needed. Uh, that's why he had the idea of making a human being just like you or me down to the thinnest hair. Well, do you know anything about anatomy, Miss Glory? Um, not really, no. Uh, uh, no, nor do I, but, but just... Think of how old Rossum got it into his head to make everything, every gland, every organ, just as they are in the human body. The appendix, the tonsils, <laughs> the belly button, or even the other things with no practical function, even the um, <clears throat> sexual organs. Oh, well, the, the, the sexual organs, I mean, they would... Oh, they do have a function. <laughs> I, of course, realize that. When people are made artificially, there's really not much need for them. No, oh, I, I see what you mean. Well, in the museum, I can, I'll show you the monstrosity he created over the ten years he was working. Well, it was supposed to be a man, but it lived for a total of three days. Uh, old Rossum had no taste whatsoever. The thing was just <laughs> horrible. It was just horrible what he did. But on the inside, well, it's got all the things that a man's supposed to have. Really, uh, the detail, the work is really quite, well, amazing. And then Rossum's nephew came out here. Now, this man, Miss Glory, he was a genius. As soon as he saw what the old man is doing, he said, this is ridiculous to spend 10 years making a man. If you can't do it quicker than nature, then you might as well give up on it. And then he began to study anatomy himself. Well, that's not what they say in the papers either. 
Uh, what they say in the papers are paid advertisements and all sorts of nonsense. They say that the old man invented robots himself for one thing. What the old man did might have been all right for a university, but he had no idea about industrial production. He thought he'd be making real people, real workers, real professors, or real idiots. It was young Rossum who had the idea of making robots that would be a living and intelligent workforce. What they say in the papers of the two great men working together is just a fairy tale. In fact, they never stopped arguing. The old atheist had no idea about industry and commerce, and the young man ended up shutting him up in his laboratory where he could just play around with his great failures while he got on with a real job himself in a proper scientific way. Old Rossum literally cursed him. Then he just carried on his laboratory, produced two more physiological monstrosities, and one day they found him in there dead. And that's the whole story. But, and then what did young Rawson do? <laughs> ah, now young Rawson. That was the start of a new age. After the age of research came the age of production. He took a good long look at the human body and saw straight away that it was much too well, complicated. Any good engineer would design it much more simply. So he began to redesign the whole anatomy, seeing what he could leave out, simplify. Well, in short, Miss, I'm not boring you, am I? Oh, no, quite the opposite. This is fascinating. <laughs> so young Rossum said to himself, huh. Man is a being that does things such as feel happiness, play the violin, go for a walk, and all sorts of other things which are simply not necessary. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, but he meant, of course, that those traits are simply not needed for activities such as weaving or calculating the tasks of industry. A petrol engine doesn't have any ornaments or tassels on it, and making an artificial worker is just like making a petrol engine. The simpler you make the production, the better you make the product. Uh, what sort of worker do you think is best? Oh, um, the best sort of worker? Well, uh, I suppose one who is honest and dedicated. <laughs> no. The best sort of worker is the cheapest worker, the one that has the least needs. What young Rossum did was invented a worker with the least needs possible. Well, he had to make him simpler. He threw out uh, everything that wasn't of any direct use to his work. That's to say, he threw out the man and put in the robots. <laughs> Miss Glory, robots are not people. They are mechanically much better than we are. They have an amazing ability to understand things, but they don't have a soul. Young Rossum created something much more sophisticated than nature ever did, technically at least. Well, they do say that man was created by God. <laughs> so much the worse for them. God had no idea about modern technology. Would you believe that young Rossum, when he was alive, was playing at God? Well, how is he doing that? Well, he started making super robots, working giants. He tried to make them four meters tall. <laughs> Who wouldn't believe how those monsters kept breaking up? Breaking up? Yes. All of a sudden, for no reason, a leg or an arm would break. Um, this planet just seems too small for monsters like that. So now we just make them uh, normal size and normal proportions. Well, uh, I saw my first robot in our city. They bought him. That is to say, they employed him, too. But, Miss Glory, robots are bought and sold. They retained him to work as a road sweeper. I watched him working. He, he was so strange, so quiet. Have you seen my assistant? No, oh, uh, I, I didn't really notice her. You know, R U R is never really made, well, you need robots, but we do have some that are better than others. The best ones can last up to 20 years. And then they die, don't they? Well, they get worn out. Sulla, let Miss Glory have a look at you. Pleased to meet you. It must be very hard for you out here cut off from all the rest of the world. I do not know the rest of the world, Miss Glory. Please, sit down. Oh, well, where are you from? From here. The island. Oh, you were born here? Yes, I was made here. What? 
<laughs> Sella isn't a person, Miss Glory. She's a robot. Oh, please forgive me. <laughs> Sella doesn't have feelings. Well, you can examine her. Well, notice the accuracy of the skin. No, no, it looks quite all right. Well, it feels just the same as human skin. Well, perhaps the eyes are a little beady. But look at that hair. Mm. Turn around, Sulla. Stop it! Well, talk to our guests. We're very honored to have her here. Please, sit down, miss. Did you have a good crossing? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. It will be better to not go back on the Amelia, Miss Glory. The barometer is dropping fast. Wait here for the Pennsylvania. That is a very good and strong ship. How big is it? The Pennsylvania is 12,000 tons and can travel at 20 knots. <laughs> That's enough now, Sella. <gasps> Wait, show us how well you speak French. Do you speak French? I speak four languages. I can write, dear sir, monsieur. Get a hair, uh, c'est uh, Enough, enough. This is all just humbug. You are nothing but a bunch of charlatans. Sulla's not a robot. She is a living girl, just like I am. I'm sorry, you should be ashamed of yourself. Why are you play-acting like this? I am a robot. No, no, no. You are lying. Oh, I'm sorry, Sulla. I realize, I realize that they only make you do this to make their product look good. Sulla, you are a living girl, just like I am. Please, just admit it. Oh, sorry, Miss Glory. I'm afraid Sulla really is a robot. You are lying. What's that? <laughs> mm. Well then, if you allow me, I'll... It appears I'll have to convince you. Marius, take Sulla down to the section and have her opened up. Wait. Now. What? Where? Oh, di dissection. Once they've cut her open, you can go and have a look. I'm not going there. Well, please forgive me, but you did say something about lying. So you're going to have her killed? <laughs> you don't kill a machine. Don't worry, Stella. I won't let them take you. Do, do they always treat you like this? You shouldn't put up with it. Do you hear? You shouldn't put up with it. Miss Glory, I am a robot. I, I don't care what you are. Robots are people, just as we are. Oh, Stella, would you really let them cut you open? Yes. Aren't you afraid of dying? I do not understand dying, Miss Glory. Well, do you understand what would happen to you then? Yes, I should cease to move. This is terrible. Marius, tell the lady what you are. Robot, Marius. Would you take Sulla down to my section? Affirmative. Would you feel not feeling pity for her? I do not understand pity. Well, what would happen to her? She would cease to move and then be transferred to reclamation. Well, that's what death is, Marius. Are you afraid of death? No. <laughs> there. Miss Glory, you see, robots don't cling to life. There's no way they could. They've got no sense of pleasure. And they are less self-aware than a pile of grass clippings. No, stop it! Send them out of here, at least! Oh, Marius and Stella, you can go now. <clears throat> How horrible. This is positively vile. Oh, well, vile? What's vile about it? I don't know. And why did you give her the name Sulla? Don't you like that name? It's a man's name. Sulla was a Roman general. Oh, we thought Marius and Sulla were lovers. No. Marius and Sulla were, were generals who fought against each other. I forget when. Well, go to the window. Um, what do you see? Um, bricklayers? Robots. All our workers here are robots. A and down there, what do you see there? Um, some kind of office. That's accounting. And in it... Lots and lots of accountants. <laughs> robots. All our staff are robots. All to the north is manufacturing and <laughs> lunchtime. The, the robots don't know when they're supposed to stop working. Well, at two o'clock, I can begin your tour at the mixing trials. Mixing? Oh, the, the pestles for mixing the dough. Well, each one of them can mix the material for up to a thousand robots at a time. Then there are the vials of the liver, bile, brains, and so on. 
Oh, and the bone factory, and after that, the spinning mill. Spinning mill. Oh, that's where we make the nerve fibers and veins. After that, there's the intestine mill, where kilometers of tubing run through at a time. Well, assembly is where all these components are put together. Oh, rather like making an automobile. Each worker contributes just his own part of the production, which automatically goes on to the next worker, and to the third, and on and on. Well, it's all quite fascinating to watch. And then it's off to the drying room, and finally into storage, where the newly made robots work. Where did you make them work as soon as they're made? Well, it's more like working in the way a new piece of furniture works. Um, they need to get used to the idea that they exist. There's something on the inside of them that just needs to little grow or something. Something that's just like something that settles until it clicks. Um, there are a lot of new things, little things on the inside that just aren't there until this time. We need to leave a little space for natural development. Well, in the meantime, the products go through their apprenticeship. Which involves... <laughs> Uh, much like going to school for a person. They learn to speak, write, and do arithmetic, as they've got amazing memories. Uh, you, if you read a 22-volume encyclopedia to them, they could repeat it back to you word for word, but they never think of anything new for themselves. They'd make very good university lectures. Uh, after that, they're sort of distributed, 15,000 a day, not counting those that are affected and go to reclamation, and on and on it goes. I apologize if my interest is an imposition to you. What? Oh, g God, no. I just thought we might <laughs> uh, we might talk about something different. Um, there's just a few of us here surrounded by hundreds of thousands of robots. All we ever talk about is production levels day after day. It's as if there was some kind of curse on us. Oh. I'm very sorry that I called you a liar. Enter. Domin, not disturbing you, are we? Uh, come on in. Uh, Miss Glory, this is Alquist, Gall, Fabry, and Hollemeyer. Um, This is Mr. Glory's daughter, Helena. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Glory? <laughs> we had no idea. This is very nice. Welcome, Miss Glory. Pleasure to meet you. Hello, and what's going on here? Uh, come on in, Busman. Uh, this is Busman, and this is Mr. Glory's daughter, Helena. Pleased to meet you. Oh, that's wonderful. Miss Glory, would you mind if we alerted the media of your arrival? Oh, no, 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 please don't. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to impose. Miss Glory, did you have a good journey? Uh, will you be staying here with us for long? What did you think of our factory, Miss Glory? Uh, Came over on Amelia, did you? Uh, quiet, now let Miss Glory speak. What am I supposed to say to them? What have you like? Should I? Should I be open with them? Of course you should. Tell me, do you not mind the way that you're treated here? Uh, treated by whom? Any of these people. The, the way we're treated? How do you mean? God, what's happened? Now, Miss Glory, dear me. What I mean to say is... Do you not think that you could have a better kind of existence? Well, uh, that all depends by what you mean by existence, Miss Glory. What I mean is, well, this is all just horrible. It is positively vile. The whole of Europe is talking about what's going on here and the way that you're treated. And that's why I've come here to see for myself. And I find that it is a thousand times worse than anybody thought. How could your poor souls bear it? What? What is it you think we have to bear? Well, your very lives here. You are people just like we are, for God's sake. Just like anybody else in Europe, anybody else in the world. This is a scandal, the way that you have to live here, and it isn't worthy of you. My word, Miss Glory. No, I, I think there might be something in what Miss Glory is saying. We really do live here like a, like a band of bohemians. Far, far worse than bohemians. May I? May I call you brothers? Why on earth not? Brothers, I haven't come here on behalf of my father. I have come on behalf of the League of Humanity. Brothers, the League of Humanity now has more than 2,000 members. 2,000 people who are standing up and want to help you. 
2,000 people, you say. That's quite an impressive number. That's uh, very nice indeed. Very nice. I always say that old Europe hasn't had its day yet. Do you hear, my friends? They haven't forgotten about us. They want to help us. What sort of help do you have in mind? A, a theater performance would be sweet. Ah, uh, yes, an orchestra. Ah, uh, to hear Dvorak again. Uh. Yes, he is wonderful, but much, much more than that. Yourself. Oh, never mind myself. I will stay here as long as I am needed. Well, that is good news. I'll go and get the best room ready for Miss Glory then, darling. Now, wait a minute, Alquist. I have a feeling Miss Glory hasn't quite finished speaking yet. No, I haven't finished speaking. Not unless you intend to shut me up by force. Harry, how dare you? Thank you. I knew you'd protect me. Well, excuse me, Miss Glory, um, but are you sure you're talking to robots? Who else would I be talking to? I'm afraid they are just ordinary people, just like you, uh, just like the whole of Europe. <laughs> you aren't robots. Ah, oh, God forbid. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> and kind of rude, Miss Glory. And we were getting along so well. But, but that is impossible. On, on my word of honor, Miss Glory, we are not robots. Then why did you tell me that all of your staff were robots? All of our staff are robots, but not the management. Oh, let me let me introduce them. Um, Mr. Fabry, our director of assembly, Rossum's Universal Robots. Uh, this is Dr. Gall, director of research and development. Dr. Hallemeyer is the director of the facility and oversees the programming of the inventory. Our commercial operations are directed by Mr. Bussman. And Mr. Alquist, our chief builder, is the head of construction at Rossum's Universal Robots. I am so, so sorry, gentlemen. This is, this is terrible. What have I done? Oh, it, it doesn't matter, Miss Glory. It was all in good fun. Oh, please, sit down. I feel so stupid. Now you'll send me back on the next ship. Not for the world. Why would we want to send you back? Because now you know, now you know that I want to destroy your business. <laughs> no, no. Oh, not at all. Uh, do you have any idea how many saviors, messiahs, and prophets travel here every year? Hundreds. More of them arrive with every ship. Uh, missionaries, anarchists, <laughs> the Salvation Army, uh, everything you can think of. Well, it's rather astonishing just how many churches and madmen there are in the world. <laughs> and you let them talk to the robots? Well, why wouldn't we? In fact, we've let them all so far. Robots remember everything, but that's all they do. They don't even laugh at what people tell them. It's really quite incredible. Well, if you'd like, I can take you down to storage and you can talk to the robots there. Yes, there are currently 347,000. Quite the audience. Ah, there you are. Lecture them on whatever you like. Uh, read them the Bible, logarithmic tables, or absolutely anything. Oh, you can talk about inalienable rights. I, I thought that if somebody tried to listen to them, to, to understand them, then... But, but why, Miss Glory? There's nothing more different from people than a robot. Then why do you make them? <laughs> That's a good one. Why do we make robots? <laughs> so that they can work for us, Miss Glory. One robot can take the place of two and a half workers. Even though our base models are as strong as a tractor. The human body is very imperfect. One day it had to be replaced with a machine that could work much better. Human labor cost too much. No, they were very unproductive. They weren't good enough for modern technology. And besides, there's been such wonderful progress. Well, to stop uh, making robots is... <laughs> I, my apologies, yes. I must beg your pardon. Why? What's wrong? Please forgive me. But, but to give birth to a machine is wonderful progress. It's more convenient, and it's quicker, and everything quicker means progress. Nature had no notion of the modern rate of work. From a technical point of view, the whole of childhood is quite pointless. Simply a waste of time. And thirdly... Oh, stop it! 
as you like. Uh, can I ask you what actually it is that your league, what is it, the League of Humanity? Uh, what does it stand for? Well, it's meant to, actually. It's meant to protect the robots and make sure that they're treated properly. Well, that's not at all a bad objective. A machine should always be treated properly. In fact, I agree with you completely. I never like it when things are damaged. Miss Glory, please enroll all of us as new paying members of your organization. No, you don't understand. What we want, what, what we actually want, is to set the robots free. <laughs> to do what, exactly? Well, they should be treated... They, they should be treated the same as people. Do you think they should have some vote? <laughs> Do you think they should be paid a living wage as well? Perhaps go out and get a stein of lager with their friends after a day's work. <laughs> well, of course they should be able to drink a lager if they wanted to. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to see about that. Wages. What do you think they would do with their wages? Well, they would buy the things they need, things to bring them pleasure. This all sounds very nice. Only robots don't feel pleasure. And what are these things that they are supposed to buy? They can be fed on pineapples, straw, anything you like. It's a, all the same to them, and they haven't a sense of taste. There's nothing they're interested in, Miss Glory. Nothing has ever made a robot smile or laugh. Then why don't you make them happier? They couldn't do that. They're just robots. They've got no will of their own, no passions, no hopes, no souls. They're labor. No love, no courage? Well, of course they don't feel love. Robots don't love anything, not even themselves. Courage? Well, I'm not sure about that. A couple of times, not very often, mind you. They have shown some resistance. Wait, what? Well, nothing in particular. Just that sometimes they seem to sort of um, go silent. It's like some kind of an epileptic fit. Robots cramp, we call it. Or sometimes one of them might suddenly smash whatever is in its hand or stand still or grind their teeth and then they transfer to reclamation. It's clearly just some technical issue. A production flaw. No, no, that is their soul. <laughs> if you think that the grinding of teeth is the beginnings of a soul. Yes, or a sign that there's an internal struggle taking place. Well, you've made them intelligent. Now make them self-aware. Well, now there is a problem we can solve, Miss Glory. Uh, in fact, Dr. Gall is carrying out some experiments right now. Not yet, Dom, and I'm still working on nerves. Nerves? To feel pain? Right, Miss Glory, now you're getting it. See, uh, robots have virtually no sense of physical pain. Young Rossum simplified the nervous system a little too much, and that turned out to have been a mistake, so we're working on the inclusion of suffering. You won't give them a soul. Why on earth do you want to give them pain? Industrial efficiency, Miss Glory. Uh, the robots sometimes cause themselves damage because there's no pain response. Uh, they do things like cut off fingers or lose their hands in machines or even crush their heads. Uh, it's a huge hassle and a real mess to clean up. It doesn't matter to them. It, a nervous system is integrated damage protection. Will they be any happier when they can feel pain? I doubt it, but it is a really cool technical improvement. Um, I hear marketing is doing their thing and working it into the advertising for next year's models. That's right. The shareholders are very excited. But you won't create a soul for them. It's not within our power. Uh, not on our interest. Uh, raises production costs. Just think how cheaply we make them. 120 each complete with clothing, and 15 years ago they cost 10000 Five years ago we still had to buy clothes for them, but... Now we have our own weaving mills and even some material at a, a fifth of the price of other mills. Tell me, Miss Glory, 
what is it you pay for a meat of cloth? I really don't know. <laughs> dear, dear me, and you want to represent the League of Humanity. Well, cloth nowadays is three times cheaper, miss. The price of everything is three times cheaper and just going down, down, down. No, I don't see how that's relevant. What I mean is the price of labor is getting cheaper. Even with its food, a robot costs no more than three quarters of a cent per hour. It's wonderful. Every factory is buying robots as quick as they can to reduce production costs. And those that aren't are going bankrupt. Yes, yes, you are exactly right. They're throwing their workers out on the streets. Uh, well, of course they are. And while they're doing that, we're putting 500,000 tropical robots out on the Argentine pampas to cultivate wheat. Tell me, what does a loaf of bread cost where you come from? I've no idea. Yeah, you see? In good old Europe, a loaf of bread now costs two cents. But that bread comes from us, do you see? Two cents a loaf, and the League of Humanity has no idea. <laughs> Miss Glory, you do not even know if you are paying too much for a loaf of bread. Or for society. Or for anything else. But in five years' time, well, you may want to sit down. What? Why? Because you'll be shocked when you learn that in five years' time, the price will be a tenth of a cent. You'll be drowning in weed and in everything else you can think of. Yes, and all the workers in the world will be unemployed. Yes, they will be, Alquist. Well, they will be, Miss Glory. But in ten years' time, Rossum's Universal Robots will be making so much wheat, so much material, so much of everything that nothing will cost that anything. Everyone will just be able to take as much as he needs. No one will live in poverty. They won't have jobs. That's true, but that's because there won't be any jobs to do. Everything will be done by our living machines. People will only do the things they want to do. They can live their lives just to make themselves perfect. And do you think that that's really going to happen? That's really going to happen. It, it couldn't possibly not happen. There may be some terrible things that happen before that Miss Glory that just can't be avoided. But then man will stop being the servant of other men or the slave of material things. No one will have to pay for a loaf of bread with his life and with hatred. You're not a laborer anymore. You don't have to sit in front of a computer all day. You don't have to go dig coal or stance mining someone else's machines. You don't have to lose your soul to a work you hate. Tommen, Tommen, you're making all this sound too much like paradise. I've always seen something good in stewardship, something great about humility. There is a some sort of dignity about working and getting tired after a day's labor. Maybe there was. But we can't always be thinking about the things we lost by changing the world as Adam knew it. Adam had to gain his bread by the sweat of his brow. He had to suffer hunger and thirst, tiredness and humiliation. Now is the time we can go back to paradise where Adam was fed by the hand of God. When man was free and supreme, man will once more be free of labor and anguish, and his only task will be to make himself perfect, to become the Lord of creation. Well, now you are confusing me, but I really wish that I could believe in all that. You're just younger than we are, Miss Glory. Trust us, just you wait and see. Well said. Perhaps Miss Glory might like to join us for lunch. Of course she will. Uh, Domin, make the invitation on our behalf, of course. Uh, Miss Glory, if you would do us the honor. How can I, now that you know my intentions? Uh, well, uh, do it for the League of Humanity. Yes, in honor of the League of Humanity. <laughs> uh, well, in that case... Uh, that has settled. Uh, Miss Glory, if you would please excuse us for uh, five minutes. Uh, pardon me. Oh, and I uh, must attend to a communication. <laughs> and I nearly forgot. Why have they all gone? Uh, to do the cooking. The cooking? But we're surrounded by... Robots, yes. The robots could do the cooking for us, only as I've got no sense of taste, it's not always... <laughs> Trust me, it's better this way. 
Oh, oh, nothing to worry about, though. Hollemeyer is excellent with meats, and gold does a sort of sauce thing, and well, if all else fails, Bustman makes a passable omelet. <laughs> <laughs> well, then this is going to be quite a feast. Um, what does Mr. Uh, the Builder do? All questo. Lays the table. Oh, Fabry gets some fruit. To be honest, they're worse cooks than the robots. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, there is something that I wanted to ask you. I've been wanting to ask you something, too. And we do have five minutes. Oh, well, what was it that you wanted to ask? Oh, no, you started to ask first. Well, maybe it's stupid of me, but why do you make both male and female robots when, um... Well, when sex has no meaning for them. Oh, that's right. It's, it's a matter of um, supply and demand. People are used to a certain aesthetic regarding some occupations. Oh, I see. Um, and tell me, towards each other, are the male and female robots, are they, um... Uh, simply indifferent. There's no sign of any attraction for each other at all. Oh, well, that's just horrible. Why? Oh, it's just so, so unnatural. You don't even know whether you're supposed to loathe them or envy them or... <laughs> or feel sorry for them? Yes! No, <laughs> stop it. Oh, what was it that you were going to ask? Oh, uh, I'd like to ask you, Miss Helena Glory, if you would marry me. Wait, what? Marry me. No! What are you thinking of? <laughs> there are only three minutes left. If you don't marry me, you'll just have to marry one of the other ones. <laughs> For heaven's sake, why on earth would I marry any of you? Oh, they're all about to ask you one after the other. How would they dare? I'm afraid they all seem to have fallen madly in love with you. Well, I didn't want them to do that. No, I am leaving. Oh, but surely you wouldn't do that, Helena. You'd make them all so very sad. <laughs> I, I can't marry all of you, can I? Oh, no, no. But you can marry one. Uh, if you won't have me, I don't know, would hmm, Fabry do? Stop. Gall? What? No, 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 no. Be quiet. <laughs> I don't want to marry any of you. Oh, oh, two minutes left. This is awful. You know what? Marry one of the robots. A robot is not a woman. Oh, and that's all you want, isn't it? I'd get the impression that you'd marry anybody who turned up here. Oh, heavens no. Uh, enough have been here already, trust me. Young. Oh, my, yes. Well, then why didn't you marry any of them? Hmm. <laughs> because, hmm. Because I didn't lose my head over any of them. Not until today, not until this moment, the moment you took off your sunglasses. I know. <laughs> One minute left. But I can't, for God's sake. One minute left. Either you look me in the eye and say something quite repulsive, so I drop this proposal, or else you'll... Well, you are just a common ruffian. Oh, perhaps, but a man is supposed to be a bit of a ruffian. That's part of being a man. You are completely mad. People are supposed to be a little mad, Helena. Sometimes it's the best thing about it. <laughs> you are... You are... Oh, Lord. <laughs> Are you ready? Wait, what? No. Time's up. I need your response, Helena. Not for all the robots in the world. <laughs> uh, everything finished in the kitchen? Yes. <laughs> Here, too. We'll speak again after lunch. This had better be the best lunch I've ever had for me to change my answer. Well, this is the modern age. Stranger things have happened.